And welcome back, everybody. Welcome back to Chronicles of Power, a weekly podcast dedicated to the Powerverse, where we talk about and go into further detail about all of the shows within the Powerverse. And recently, we have been doing Power Book 2 Ghosts, but I know that there is a show that we've all been waiting for, (laughs) for, let's see, it's over 14 months now, and that is Power Book 4 Force and today in the building we have one half, some would say the better half of the Samson brothers. We have Mr. Diamond Samson. His real name is Isaac Keys. <laughs> clap it up, clap yes. it up. Woo! <laughs> it's just yeah. me and you, so we gotta clap together. <laughs> <laughs> but um <clears throat> I would like everyone to Take a gander at Mr. Isaac Keys, and if you can just introduce yourself, tell us who you play. Even though I've already given you an introduction, you can do it yourself, too. Well, yes, that was a wonderful introduction. I appreciate it. Uh, yes, I'm Isaac Keys. I have the pleasure of playing the character of Diamond Samson uh, on Power Book 4 Force, a.k.a. the Tommy Show. <laughs> <laughs> well, now it's the Isaac Show. Well, yeah, let's have a good time. But today... I'm glad to be here. <laughs> okay, so the first thing that I wanted to talk about is I just want to get it out the way of when Force is coming back and what can we look forward to for when it does come back? Yeah, well, the first question, is when is Force coming back? <laughs> and I think that's the question that everybody wants to know right now and had to answer to. Um, and unfortunately, I can't give you the exact answer, but... I believe it's coming up. I mean, like, you know, right now it's, you said something about the, you know, we're waiting Mm -hmm. and I'm glad that we still have such a strong fan base that people are really anticipating this show. I'm getting hit up all the time about it. I'm excited about it because mind you, I haven't even seen season two yet, but I know how amazing it is um, because I was there shooting it. So (laughs) um, being a part of it, man, and I just say that I felt season one was, was really good, but it was so much room to be able to grow. Because you know, season one, you gotta, you gotta, you gotta develop the characters, you gotta develop the storyline. But now we're going right into it. Mm-hmm. Like season two, I'm talking about we open it up and it's, it's bang bang, let's go. And it's going, we're going to be on a wave that's going to continue to rise, it's going to start high, it's going to get even higher. And um, I'm excited about that. And I'm, just, I'm really just excited about the fans being able to, to get a chance to see it. And just going back to your answer, I mean, the question is that I'm not sure when it's coming out, but I believe we're anticipating sometime very, very soon. Okay. Yeah. So prior to filming this, we did get a little sneak peek of the Tommy, the Tommy picture of him yeah. looking through the blinds. Uh-huh. And I'm guessing that it's coming soon because the last time that they did that uh, with the Power Book 2 yeah. promo, we know that we got it like within the next three months or so. So hopefully we'll see Force around that same yeah, time. I'm hoping so too. If not sooner that's you know if not sooner yeah I, you know i'm i'm like the fans i'm like <laughs> you want to get it on the road yeah, let's go okay so because uh ghost has just ended mm-hmm. and we were able to see people from force well we saw tommy from mm-hmm. force in ghost how do you feel about possibly more cross branding between the books so between ghost and force do you do you anticipate more of that happening? Yeah. Would you like for that to happen? I think I, I love the fact that that Tommy appears in Ghost. Okay. Because that's where it starts from. He <laughs> starts from the very beginning, you know. So it's it's only right for that to happen. Um, I think as long as it makes sense, I think there's some amazing characters in both of these these stories. And I think that as long as we can continue to build on these characters and allow them to, to make the storyline just be go to a heightened era, you know, mm-hmm. area, I think it's amazing. And I I anticipate it, you know, I'm not in the writer's room, but I, I anticipate it. I just feel like this, it'd be dope, you know what I'm saying, if, if Diamond meets, you know what I'm saying, meets the Tahada family some kind of way, or, <laughs> you know, like, or my brother, Jannard, somehow makes it up that way. Or, you know, I just think it's amazing that we, if we, we have the opportunity to do so. So we have some amazing writers, so I think they're going to they gonna make some magic happen. I think so, too. Yeah. <laughs> I think I think that we hopefully we'll get to see you cross paths with the Tejadas or yeah. something because I feel like they need more opposition and I think that Diamond would be good opposition for the Tejadas. Yeah. Diamond and Tommy, like that <laughs> that duo. Yeah. It's, it's an odd couple, a little bit, but it's, I think that duo. It's an amazing duo, and you know Chicago's not too far from New York, so you know 
not not, not too happen. far. So, okay, I do want to do some background on you first uh -huh. for people who haven't watched interviews with you before. And if most of you don't know, uh, Mr. Isaac Keys, he used to be an NFL player. So he yeah. used to play for the Vikings. Yeah. Green Bay? Green Bay, yeah. And what was the last one? Arizona. Arizona. Yeah. And then from Arizona, you moved to Canada. Yeah, Edmonton. Right? How yeah. was that? Uh, it was cold. <laughs> <laughs> no, it was cold. Um, it was it's a it's it's a change. You know, I I started playing football when I was seven years old. Oh. Um, I played football, baseball, pretty much all sports when I was a kid. Um, progressed in football. Um, but I was always an underdog in football. Like I didn't get I didn't get a scholarship coming out of high school. I just really wanted to play collegiate football. I was played out of position in high school, but I wanted to play. So I walked on. I ended up walking on at Morehouse College, which is which is not known for athletics. It's more of an academic school. And it's an amazing institution. Um, my alma mater, very proud of it. Um, but I walked on there, earned a scholarship, played three years there. That's it. Three years there. I mean, like better word, I bust my ass. Like I, like I, like really was there, like working because I just wanted more, you know. So eventually, it was like, hey, you made an opportunity to go to the NFL. I'm like, man, stop it, stop, stop playing with me, you know. <laughs> Who's coming out of the NFL at Morehouse? For at the Morehouse, time? right? At the time, well, me, you know. So <laughs> you, you know, I did, and. You know, I was a dream come through. Come true. That you know, the stars and the moon had to align for it to make it happen. But even then, I was only picked up as a free agent, and it was a month after the draft. So y'all know the draft just ended at the end of April. Right. So a month after that, so end of May, I get a call from Minnesota Vikings, and the coach says, "Hey, we want to bring you in for a workout." Oh. At this point, I didn't even know what the hell I was going to do. I'm going to graduate. You know, yes, when you had to talk with your parents, you're going to be <laughs> off the insurance. What you going to do about where you working at? Where you going? And I'm like, I'm at a school where everybody's going to law school. They're going to get their you know, medical school. I'm sitting there like, I don't know what the hell I'm going to do. And I just spent all this money. <laughs> I was saying graduating. I had to earn a scholarship, which was my, like, my last year. Um, so um, I went there and did that workout. And, I mean, I gave them everything I had. And they said they want to sign me to a free agent contract. And that was the start of that journey. And even then, it was still just always like grinding, grinding. So I come from the underdog aspect, and that's how I think. And I think, you know, going over to Canada was just like, that was the tail end of my career in the NFL. Like, it was like, okay, what's I'm going to do? When you start going to Canada, it's like, when you're like, uh, I want to get back to the NFL, but I don't going to make it. So to answer your question, that, I mean, the CFL is just different. It's a different game. It's, it's you know, so coming from starting to stay one game for seven years old, Going to play a different one, it's, 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 a, it's a different experience. But I made it happen. Underdog game, but ended up starting. So, that's so after after leaving Canada and you came back to the States, mm -hmm. is that where you got the bug for acting? Or <laughs> or you just, what like what happened? What made you say, I want to take up acting? <laughs> I laugh because it's like... Again, I didn't know what the hell I was getting ready to do. And <laughs> did I, did I, you have to have the talk with your parents again? I had had to talk with my parents, <laughs> the Jesus moments, and anybody <laughs> else that would listen. That's the conversations I had. I um went back, and honestly, I've said this in other interviews, it was kind of like a rock bottom at that point because it was like I had invested so much in real estate, like trying to you know, make money outside of football because at the time, you know, people think you're a millionaire when you go to play the NFL. Okay. Family members call you, hey, you on TV, you football. No, it wasn't. You know, at the time I came in and people laughed, the uh, rookie minimum was $209,000 when I went into the NFL in 2001. Mm -hmm. And then by the end of my career, I was still make, trying to do active roster, practice squad. Practice squad would go down to 70000 So you weren't even making 100000 at that time. So then as you continue to go, so you know, people are probably laughing like, what? You know, no, no, this is good that's information. The truth. Yeah, yeah, you guys but now the rookie minimum now is like, I don't know, like eight hundred thousand or something now. You know, it's been a long time. How much? It's up there now. It's like five to eight or somewhere around there. I'm not I'm not sure. Somebody will correct me on this, I'm sure. But the that's the, the rookie now because it goes up every year and I played many moons ago. So but um so it wasn't a lot of money. So I was trying to do things outside of football, like real estate and you know, with friends, and but I didn't know anything about real estate. I was just doing it because I saw the dollar sign. It was outside of money, mm -hmm. outside of money for football. So at that point, 2008 comes and hit. Oh, the that, recession. Yeah, the recession hit. And me not knowing nothing about real estate, the market crashed. The bubble, yeah. I had the real estate. I didn't know what I was going to do, so I was spending the money that I made from real estate and my own money trying to keep these houses afloat. And next thing you know, I'm looking at my account, and I got $50 in it. Oh, no. So now here comes the mental health aspect that nobody knew about at this time period. You know, it's a big topic now, 
but nobody knew about you know, mental health at that point. You know, they we weren't talking about it in a sense. So now I'm going through a point of being ashamed, feeling like, you know, um, that old NFL player, I fell back into the same boat of now you broke, that type of thing. And I'm like, I was always aware of that, but it still happened. Right. So I went through a whole phase and a transition of of being feeling one way of coming from this NFL player to now just being like, feeling like I don't have anything. And I completely started over, completely started over. And that ended up leading me to acting because I was surrounding myself, I messed a couple of actors, but that transition and that pivot to figuring out what the hell I'm gonna do, because the biggest thing leaving from something you've been doing for so long, as I'm sure you can relate to, right. is that how do you find that same passion in something else? And it takes a journey to find that same passion, but when you find it and you can latch on, and that's when I can use all the things that I learned in the sports and put that into this new career, which was acting. Well, what were some of the things that you learned in sports that translates to acting? Discipline. Um, a, a strong work ethic, how to work with others, how to make something out of nothing, and the the construct of of learning how to win, but also accept losses. Yeah, so I, I think those things really helped me uh, in terms of acting because acting is nothing but a bunch of losses, and then you get a win. Like people don't see all the Hopefully. losses. You know, that I, all the auditions that I either sucked in or that I did well in but still didn't get the role or got the role, but then they changed it up to somebody else or they see what we see now. Speaking of which, <laughs> <laughs> before we start, yeah, Power, I found an old clip of you really? on a show with Amarosa. <laughs> oh, you, oh, you to dig did it. you? Oh, okay. Did okay. you audition for that? You know what? I, yeah. Is that where your acting jobs came in? Because you was on a show with Amarosa? That's I was like, the... why didn't I know about this before? <laughs> That's where the pot started being stirred That's when the up. pot was being stirred? Yeah, it was being brewed up. All the acting talent was being brewed up on that but, reality show. So, Oh, so they so it's a reality show and it you really had to is. audition for it? But No, but, but you know, it really was. It was unscripted. And at the time, I had a... Uh, I, had a I think a, we got a... Uh, unscripted or yeah it was unscripted it really was okay it was unscripted right. i mean they tell you certain things but they really created like a lot of narratives like those producers will watch you throughout all day while you're locked up in this you know penthouse i mean of course it's a nice place but mm -hmm. they watch you all day and create storylines and then ask you questions and then kind of curate, try to get a response out of you right you know and but to me it felt like i was in training camp like it, I, I i correlated to like football because it's like i was with 11, I mean, 10 other guys and you know we had to try to you know shine you know, okay. who was going to be, take the liking. Like, at the time, it's like, okay, well, game on. When, they, when Amarosa came in, it was game on because I knew it was about who can get her attention in the aspect. And so <laughs> that's what I went for. Okay. <laughs> it was a great time. No, I ain't gonna lie. So, I, so that's where I was like, I was like, this is what made him want to act. <laughs> to <laughs> I wanted to act before that. Honestly, okay. I didn't want to do a reality show because at that time, people didn't really respect reality TV if you were trying to be an actor. Right. So yeah. I was like, no, nah, I'm going to do that. But a friend, a close friend of mine was like, let them see your personality. Let people see who you are. You've been playing with a helmet over your head all this time. Yeah. So people don't know who you are. And they can't see your face. Yeah, they, they don't know the expressions that you can make. Yeah, exactly. I, I get that. That makes sense. Personality. So when I did it, it helped build that platform. And that's what really sparked it, as you said, because I was like, oh, I can be in front of the camera and feel comfortable in front of the camera. So then that sparked me to be like, okay, all right, TV One, which was the network, what else you got? What else like, you got put, for me? Put me on something else. <laughs> you know, I want to audition for this. And that's when I realized that I sucked in the audition room. Like, I wasn't no good. <laughs> Wait, as <an> actor. <laughs> Wait, you wasn't good? They gave me an audition, and I thought I knew what I was going to do. I was just really green. Wait, what did you audition for? It was a Tatiana Ali show. And I'm Aww. not sure which one it was, but it ran for a while. But I went No, in. I know which one. I love, I tell that story because I went in as a love interest. And I thought the love interest would come in in a suit and, and like, you know, just come mm -hmm. in with a love interest with the smoky eyes, smoldering <laughs> eyes. And I went in there and I was just forgetting lines. Oh, and, okay. And people don't understand, like, the process of acting. You go into a room, you see 10 to 12, maybe 20 people that either kind of simil similarly look like you. Mm -hmm. And everybody's in this, when you start off going over their lines, so you're just hearing the da da da, the inflictions of how they say it. And you already had in your mind how you're going to say it. Oh, and so then you're going, so now you get confused. Like, and then you go into the room, it's like, okay, go. Huh? What was like? Are you easing into this? No foreplay? No, <laughs> no nothing. No, just go. <laughs> and that's why I understand it's a process. People that understand, they always ask me how to get into acting. It's a process. You got to go through all those different steps and different things to get to a point where you develop to where you're more comfortable and it just becomes a, a more of a, a natural thing. 
Right. Do you feel like you're more of a natural at it now because you've had so much experience? I think I'm better at it now. Um, auditions, I mean, some days it's like anything. Some days it's going to be a good day. Some days it's going to be, you know, not so good in the audition room. Um, but you, your biggest thing is to find your truth in it and to find who you are and find the truth in the words and be able to tell the story. You got to get out the way of yourself because mm -hmm. the character is not you. You may have some similarities, but how would a character do it? Not necessarily you. Right. Yeah. So when you started to audition for Force, mm -hmm. were you always considered for the role of Diamond or did you audition for other roles? Um, I auditioned for other roles on other shows. Okay. So well, I auditioned. What was that? So on <laughs> Ghost, I auditioned for the pro the professor that um <laughs> that, that, that Tyreek <laughs> ended up you know, killing because he started getting a little too nosy. Mm -hmm. I auditioned for that. Um I auditioned for um that that was Jabari Reynolds guys yeah. Professor Reynolds there we go and I auditioned for Lulu on uh oh on, uh, on Raising Canaan yeah and I commend both of those actors who got those roles because they killed it yeah. and I when I watched I was like yeah that didn't, that's not really maybe me. that's not me that's not me and you yeah. know and then it worked out it seemed to work out it seemed to work out <laughs> you know? for you because yeah. they found space for you in yeah. Diamond do you think that do you well if you could play another character. Mm -hmm. Uh, what? Who would you pick? It doesn't have to be in Forest or even in uh, Ghosts, but from any of the shows. Another character. I I really can't get past Diamond. I honestly can't get past Diamond. When when they when I read Diamond, mm -hmm. when I read this breakdown, I was like, "That's me." Really? I can relate to it. I felt like it was it was speaking to me. I was like, "Oh, they they're writing this for me." Okay. And you know, and it's like from that point, I love all the shows. I love all the characters, but I feel like they did a great job casting each character with the person that they chose. I agree. Like, and I can't see some of them outside of outside of the character that they're yeah. playing, meaning, like, it fits them. Like, the it face, like, their their body movements, mm -hmm. just everything that they're doing with the character. So I, I get what you're saying with that and not seeing yourself besides who you're playing right now. Mm -hmm. But... I guess the next question or the follow-up question to that would be because you think Diamond was made for you, is there anything that is different for you or from you than Diamond? So Isaac is different than Diamond. In what way? Um, or ways? I think there's a couple ways. I think, I mean... The obvious ones, um, I haven't done time. Isaac oh, hasn't done time in, right. in jail. Um, so it took a lot to sure that I wanted to make sure that I really, that was big for me. I wanted to make sure that I really gave Diamond the true credit he needed to be coming out of a prison mm -hmm. and make sure that I talked to people who were incarcerated, make sure that I understood what it felt like as much as I could without being in there. Mm -hmm to know what it was. And it felt good to hear the people come up to me that have been incarcerated who served time, like, hey, no, you, you did that. You know, it's only a short window for me to do it, but I want to make sure I was able to do that. Um, difference in that thing, I mean, Diamond's a little bit more conflicted. He's trying to play two sides at the moment, and that's exhausting. You know, he's trying to be one foot in, one foot out. Uh, he's trying to do what he, he's known for so long, but at the same time, do it halfway. And in that game of being in the streets, you can't do it halfway or you'll end up being dead. Or back uh, in jail. Or going back to jail, which he doesn't want to do. You know, so how do you play that? And I think that confliction is what is kind of drawing people, but also people can relate to because people are always trying to see how they can pivot, transition to something else. But at the same time, it keeps calling me back. It keeps calling me back. <laughs> you know, like, you know, and you, can you relinquish your past? And I think Diamond's really facing that a lot. And I think with me, I've done a lot of work to make sure I've gotten rid of the football stuff, the bitterness of not being able to, you know, to go as far as I wanted to in football, right. um, and not being able to, you know, not hold on to my my past because that keep my future hostage. So I had to let go of a lot of things that that hurt me in my own personal life in order for me to be able to receive these blessings that I'm getting now, you know. And I think that's where Diamond's stuck at right now. Does so when we left off at the end of season one mm -hmm. diamond knows that he has a beef with his brother at this point right like mm -hmm. he knows that they are not on the same page do you think that 
Do you think that your character will ever abandon his brother? Like, I know you can't tell me mm -hmm. what happens, but just in the mindset of season one, like from what we know from what happened there, and without telling us what happens in season two, how would the character continue to deal with someone who is his blood relative in, in the show and still be able to handle the opposition that's coming from all sides because he does have a partnership with Tommy. Mm -hmm. He also doesn't necessarily want to do this life anymore, but does he still want to have a relationship with his brother and would he relinquish all of the control that he has within their organization in order to save the relationship with his brother? Like, is that the mindset of Diamond is what I'm asking? That's a great question. That's that's, that's definitely going to be answered in season two. Oh, and okay. if I was, And if I was if I was to take the advice of all the fans that come up to me, hey, you need to kill your brother. <laughs> no. Hey, man, forget your brother. Man, you need to kill your brother. And I, I'll simply ask them, and I'll laugh, and I'll simply ask them, i say, could you kill your brother? Some would be like, yeah, if he tried to kill me. But then someone would be like, I mean... I don't, I don't know, but but you need he's shady, you know. Like, <laughs> and I get it, but I think if you go back and really dig into the relationship between Diamond and Gennard, it's 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 not just his brother, you know what I mean? It, like the relationship is deeper than that. Diamond pretty much raised his brother mm -hmm. in a sense, like you know, as he was the, the he was the father figure, he was the the mother, mm -hmm. he was like to his brother in a sense. So it's deeper. The relationship is deeper than that. So when you say, can you just cut off somebody and just kill somebody, just because that person has, because it's, it's like a child. People always like, sometimes they like, well, the child doesn't respect the parent. The parent's always going to be there for that child. Always. You know what I mean? All, all that relation, because it's the older one. They, they, they have more invested into it. So, yes, Jannar may come in that angle, you know, come from that angle, and it was, it was crazy. It's hurtful. I mean, it was times on set where I would literally, I can't even deal with Chris Lofton right now. Like, <laughs> like we'd what's be in wrong with you? I, mean, like, I got I to, like, after the scene, I got to go sit over here on the corner <laughs> and over here for a second to really process and digest what's going on and really also dig into the scene, mm -hmm. you know, because he is amazing at what he's, at what he does for the character of Jannard. And that's what, you know, really brings the, 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 the energy between us together. But I think season two is, is going to be, great in the aspect of really kind of unfolding the relationship between uh, Gennard and Diamond or how much a relationship that's going to really be. Right. And I think it's going it's to be amazing to see that. Okay. When you say that you have to sit away from him, mm -hmm. is it hard to, I guess, decompress after dealing with heavy scenes? Even like scenes, I know most people like the action that's in force, mm -hmm. right? It's a lot of shoot 'em up, bang bang, right? Mm -hmm. We're gonna get explosions. We're gonna we're gonna have gunfights. We're gonna have uh, roof scenes. We're gonna have garage scenes, like the things that we've come to know in power. But after you put the the props down, is it hard to decompress from being angry and <laughs> having someone like, for instance, your brother, the person yeah. who plays the brother in your sh your brother in the show, mm -hmm. he is trying to kill he tried to kill you mm -hmm. is it hard to separate i know it's please in the comments i know that it's pretend but to have to deal with that day in and day out because it's not just one take is it hard to decompress from that after you they say cut or is it just okay yeah. we're done i'm no, i'm glad you asked that um there was a time where um there's a scene where it's uh Jannard, it's Blackston's played by um, Barton, mm -hmm. and then you have uh, Amai Ferguson, and you have um, um, Lucerne, and the, the young guys that come in. Yeah. Um, and everybody's coming at Diamond. They come in with the new proposal. Mm -hmm. Hey, we do this, and the Nora's like, "Yeah, we should do it." And I'm looking at it's like everybody coming like, "No, we shouldn't do it." Well, I'm just saying, oh gee, you act like you know. So it became a big thing, mm -hmm. and we had to shoot that scene. You know, everybody's amazing, but we were shooting it from different angles, and we're doing it after that scene and some of the other you know scenes that were similar to it. I just had to separate myself from it. And I was like, because I felt like everybody was coming towards Diamond. Like, no matter what I do, I just, you know, because you say pretend, but it's not pretend in the moment. Right. It's, like, it's I'm, very real. I'm living you, this. You know, it's like, going deep into exactly. it. And you got to shoot from this angle, this and person's that, side. That. So we're doing it over and again. But it's like, in order for this scene to work, we got to, we live in this. And it was tough that day because it was like, okay, let me, like, I just feel like they still just coming at me. You know what I mean? Like, mm -hmm. I'm like let me step away for a second. 
But I say that because it was also time I put, uh, I told uh, Joseph Sakura, mm -hmm. he plays Tommy, and he said, I said, man, I commend you for doing that for six seasons on Power, <laughs> coming over to us like with people just coming at you because the world of a street, you know, if you involved in the streets or a gangster, however you want to put it, you can't trust nobody. Right. So no matter how you live and you are always, your head is on a swivel, you know, they may seem like they're cool, but you can't trust anybody. So you're never relaxed. You're never at peace in a sense. You're riding off the adrenaline and the energy of being in this life, which can be exhausting. So when do you find that peace? So when I commend him, I said, because you're going to do that for that many seasons and that many, you can't help but to take a little bit of that home. Right. You know what I'm saying? And then you have to deal with outside. When people are always, you know, Tommy, Tommy. Now, you know, I, I, I'm humbled by a diamond, diamond. They see you as this character. They see you as this place. So I'm seeing now how it's like trying to find my peace at times. Mm -hmm. You know, I find it like, go oh, because you are always feel like you're always in it. Like the game, again, going to football. It's like you're in the game the whole time. The whole time. You know, so when do I get to sit down on the bench? No, you a starter. Get back out there. You start on everything. <laughs> you know, so, yeah. So, so it is tough sometimes. So what do you do to decompress? Like, how do you say, okay, I'm not Diamond today. Mm -hmm. I am just Isaac, whether I'm, wait, do you have children? I don't have children. Are you married? No. So I'm, I'm like, I'm alleviating a lot of that pressure already. Okay, right yeah, there. so <laughs> that's, no, that, <laughs> so that helps, like, oh, right? Oh, you good. You no, know what I'm saying? You no, got I'm kids not saying you, you good. No, but you got family. No, yeah, for sure. And I'm sure that they, they come, to, like earlier you said, you know, they thought, differently yeah. of what it would be in the NFL. Sure. You see someone on TV, you automatically think that they have access to things, mm -hmm. that they have resources that you do not. And it wasn't necessarily that, especially when you broke down the pay grades, yeah. right? So do you still, even if you're not married or you don't have children, there are still people in your life who depend on you or who mm -hmm. expect things from you. But how do you separate how do you say, okay, I just need this time for myself. I need to just be Isaac, mm -hmm. not someone that's on TV. What do you do to not be the person that's on power yeah. or on a weekly television series? Um, I do just that. Honestly, I say, okay, I need my me time. Mm -hmm. And sometimes I'll be like, oh, I'm people exhausted. You know what I'm saying? Like, because I love interacting. Like, I like I'm not the one that goes outside to be like, no, no, don't talk to me. You know, or, <laughs> or try to run and hide from people because I'm really humbled by this experience. Okay. I love that people gravitate to the character, gravitate to all the shows. I love being part of this universe. Yeah, I it's do. It's pretty dope. So when you love something, you learn how to do it to your best of your ability. So to answer the question, I, I, you know, I still have therapy. Mm -hmm. I mean, I started that even after football. I like, started doing therapy. It's real. It helps. But I had my me times. I learned to meditate. I learned to be able to, like, go in, give you all this energy, and then find my time to go sit down over here for a second. Okay. Vacations. Yes. I love <laughs> vacations. Massages. <laughs> um, sound bowls. <laughs> Look. <laughs> give me all of that. And, so things know. didn't work out with you and Amarosa, so you still say <laughs> Yeah, you know, it didn't work out, you know. Okay, so then um, now I want to get into like the fun questions. So mm -hmm. the stuff from Power. So did you watch uh, Ghosts? I watched Ghosts. I have not caught up on the episodes, the uh, the last episode. Okay, all right. I know so some got leaked, right? Uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no comment. Yeah. No, um, I had nothing to do with that. I had nothing to do with that. Nothing at all. At all. Um, <laughs> but. From Ghosts, we had one of the actors on. We had a couple of actors on from Ghosts, yeah. but um, one of my favorites, besides Sax, who who they killed off, yeah. um, Berto Cologne, he was on the show. Uh -huh. And I asked him a question that pertained to you and his character. Yep. So I, his character is someone who was in prison for, he was in prison for 10 years. Mm -hmm. And I think Diamond was there for 15. 15. Uh, and Kanan was in prison for 10 years. And I said, you know, there's a lot of similarities between yeah. you guys. How did you notice the similarities between the characters? And if there were, I think that's one of the questions, one of the reasons why I asked you earlier, mm -hmm. is there someone else that you thought that you could have played? Now, granted, I think that you were made for Diamond and mm -hmm. I can't see, like if they had to recast you, I can't see anybody else playing the role okay. at this point. But, Within the 
universe, your trajectory is similar to Lorenzo's. Mm. And the opposition that you both have is that there's someone who wants to take your spot. Mm. Now, in your case, it's your brother. In his case, it's his wife. Mm. And in Kanan's case, Ghost had already taken it. Yeah. Now, are you fighting to take back your position or do you want the do you even want the position? I think that's a great question. I think and all those um uh, you know, Alberto and of course fifty, they 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 really mastered those characters. Like they really tapped in to some places. Mm -hmm. Um I think what where, where Diamond differs in that aspect is that is that he saw a different side of himself in those fifteen years. Mm. Like, you know, they weren't able to really tap into it as much, but as they said, he came out, I'm a different person. None of those other characters really said that. They never said that. No. Diamond came out and said, you know, all that killing, I ain't really with that no more. Because background information, Diamond was a, was a straight killer. He was cutthroat. He was busy oriented. He thought about things very calculated, but he was a killer. Mm -hmm. So in those 15 years, he found a place of, of resolve. And I think you kind of saw that when he was cutting the older guy's head. A lot of people thought that was his father, but it's, that's, not his, no, that's not his father. No. It's just another inmate that I think that uh, Diamond had built a strong relationship with. Mm -hmm. And, you know, one thing about that barber chair is that you become close to people. It's a, it's like a therapist, mm -hmm. you know, and, and I think that's what Diamond had become and got to be able to kind of like, you know, inspire other people, other inmates, and also be able to see more things about himself. Mm -hmm. So when he came out, I think that's where he different. Like, he, you know, like I said, he was one foot in, one foot out. But he still, the thing about it, that word power is, is, is a very strong, you know, word. Mm -hmm. He still liked power. He liked being that guy of 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 that of that magnitude. But being that guy of magnitude, he wanted to try to reinvent the wheel a little bit slightly of how he can be still be that guy, but not do those same old things. Right. And his brothers over there are like, nah, <laughs> we gotta do it this way. This is how we do it. Don't come over trying to break the wheel. I think a lot of his, um, or at least from my perspective, a lot of Jannard's frustration with Diamond is, I've been running it for this long. Mm -hmm. You can't come out now and tell me what to do. Do you think that, it, am I looking at it the right way? I think you are. I think he, I think when he came out to it, Jannard would just kind of wanted some due respect. Mm. He felt like it respect. He, you know, he felt like he had changed this trajectory of his life. And kind of, you know, took over a business that, you know, an uh, uh, industry or, or, you know, a clout that's other part of Chicago. Like, one thing about Chicago is it's a lot of pride there. Mm. Like, we, I'm from South, you know, I'm from South Side, I'm from West Side. Like, it's it's a thing there. And mm. I wanted to make sure that I really tapped into that. And being a CBI brother from the South Side. <laughs> and that's who that's who runs the South Side in this in this show. So, you know, I think Jannar had a lot of pride. But I think he was hurt because he didn't get his due respect from his brother when he first came out. His brother didn't like feel like he had lost a position. Diamond came out feeling like I'm back in my position, sitting in that barber chair. I'm back in my position, mm -hmm. but I wasn't giving the credit enough to my brother for what he had done for all this time. I was actually all of just coming out, coming out, just saying what you did wrong rather than saying what you're doing right. And wow. I think that hurt Jannar in a lot of ways. And I, didn't I think notice it, that. You think about it as a character, Jannar is like you know when people are hurt, they try to hurt, they hurt mm -hmm. people mm -hmm. in a sense, not necessarily knowing it, but. Hurt people hurt people, mm -hmm. you know, and I think the adeptness of that, you know, uh, it magnifies into the relationship, you know, and when you, the person that you love the most is usually the person that you end up kind of hurting the most. Yeah. In a sense. And you that know? you kind of neglect and that you're not really paying attention and to the words that you're you saying. Get, if you're driven off emotion. And one thing about Diamond, the difference between, I think, those two characters is Diamond's not really driven off emotion. He likes to think and try to, like, find a ways to do things, but also not get caught doing them. And I think Jannar is more of a, an, an emotional, you know, like an, an, an impulsive type of character, which, you know, Chris Lodge plays very well. Do you think that Diamond would have gotten along with a character like Ghost? Considering he's so pragmatic, he's even killed. I, you know, that's a great question. I think, I think he, I think he would have, but I think he also still would have kind of looked at him with a little kind of. A, a squinty eye because it feels like Ghost had a lot of different arterial motives. <laughs> you know, he, he was a, uh, he had a lot of different faces. Mm -hmm. And I don't think Diamond gravitates to that in a sense. 
I think he understands like they have similarities. And I made sure I didn't go back and watch. I didn't because you know people always want to say, oh the new ghost, Diamond can be the new ghost. I didn't go back. I went back. I didn't go back and watch Power over again. I watched all the Powers mm -hmm. at least twice when they first came out. Right. But I didn't go back and watch because I didn't want to pull any nuances. Because okay. Amari Harvey is a great, does, I mean, come on. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, I mean, yeah, ghost, like, kills it. Right. So I wanted to make sure that Diamond was different and had his own kind of, his own, you know, wave and his own lane. And I think, I think they, I mean, they could deal with each other for for an amount of time, but I think they, they differ in ways. Like, Diamond is going to be Diamond. He's going, you know, he's not, you know, he, he knows how to, you know, play the game. He, he's re he knows how to read people and kind of, you know, find his way, but. I think they got along for whatever, whatever. I mean, right now it's a den of thieves out there. Like everybody's for themselves. Right. I mean, I, I, I think because you're able to get along with Tommy, I wonder. I, I was like, well, would he have gotten along with Ghost? There was a curiosity. Like mm -hmm. you could see it. Like the diamond was curious. Like who's this white boy coming <laughs> into the city? Like he's just running things <laughs> right? and just kind of like I'm more curious before. Like the first thing is like Gerard wants to kill him. <laughs> hey, hold on, wait a second. Let me see who he is. Well, let's find out. Yeah, let's find out who he, he is first. You know, let's find out his story yeah, first. But as you will see, it, it, there's going to be a lot of. <laughs> we'll <story>. see. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. So uh, I'm going to ask you a couple of other questions about okay. power. So there's something that I do. It's kind of like a this or that game, right? Yeah. Like, would you take this person or that person or whose side are you on? So, like, for instance, when I had another guest here, I said, okay. Tasha or Angie, and you would say? I would say Tasha. See? Mm. I don't even have to cut the interview today. The other person yeah. said Angie. They said Angie. <laughs> they said Angie. Yeah. I'm going with Tasha. Yeah. I, I roll with Tasha too. Yeah. Um, okay. So, Jannard or Kane? Jannard. Why? It's, it's, deeply, it's deeply rooted. <laughs> It's, but don't think of him as. Oh, oh I'm not supposed to think of as, as Diamond. Not as Diamond. Oh, okay. Like from the outside looking in. Outside looking in. Jannard. Even though he tried to kill his brother. I think so because, um, yeah, I think that's what makes it even more uh, interesting to me. Okay. That he can go to a, a, the extent of killing his brother. What other lengths can he go to? want to think about that that's why it's important to think about it <laughs> <laughs> but but i don't want okay the reason why you know what i won't say what my reason is let's let's just sure. pick another person <laughs> Let, let's pick another group of people <laughs> so we did we did tasha and angie we did janard or kane uh -huh. what about monet or lorenzo their leadership styles <sighs> I think both their leadership styles are a little suspect. <laughs> Honestly, I, I, I do. I think um, Lorenzo is, is not. I think in that show, he, he's not in touch with what's really going on. Mm. I like he feel like he's still too far on the outside of what's going on. I mean, he made the mistake of going and you know impulsive and kills Zeke. But he did it by mistake. Exactly, but because he shot him from a hundred yards away instead of seeing exactly who it is, because <laughs> he was impulsive about the other guy smashing uh, Monet. Oh gosh. Yeah. Okay. So therefore, he was impulsive. So I think the outside looking in, I think Monet is just very just like stern and just like she don't she's not listening to anybody. So I think that's why the leadership skills are suspect. Okay. If I had to choose one. I'm going to choose. I'm gonna choose Monet. If I have to choose, I'm gonna choose Monet, cause she held it down for that amount of time, while wow, for ten years she held it down. So she's more in touch with still with what's going on, even though if I feel like the way she's going about it is not necessarily, you know, the best way. One could argue, though. Uh, sure, of that course they could. One could argue uh, yes. that she was. She also was not in tune with what was going on. Cause remember mm -hmm. that classic scene of Tariq telling her everything that was happening behind her back. Diana was the one that stole the money from the bar. Yeah, Kane sugared the coke. And she, uh, I mean, and the family issue. And I mean, the true, family lies. And true, yeah, yeah. But that's but that's always a common theme within all of the power shows, right? There's always information that's missing. Yeah. Whether someone is lying or whether they're just not being forthcoming, exactly. That's always what's keeping the story moving forward. Mm -hmm. But I'm surprised you say Monet. Yeah, I'm full of surprises. <laughs> okay, let me see. I I think I have one more. Let me see. Okay. One more. Oh, 
Oh, I don't think we should do this one. So, it, it, sax or Blanca? Sax. Yeah, I think so. come on. Shout out to Shane. <laughs> yeah. I Sex. Think so too. Yeah. <laughs> hold it down for a long time with his conniving ass. Yeah. I know. Yeah. He he wiggled his way out of a lot man, of stuff. <laughs> a lot of stuff. I'm so glad they kept bringing him back, man. But yeah. All right, I, I thought all right, P, I thought he was gonna make it out of this I one. Did too. Well, initially. Mm -hmm. But then after a while, once I saw it, I was like, Oh no, he's not gonna make it out of here. Yeah, when when when, when the brother uh said that he had nothing else to lose. <laughs> to lose. I was <laughs> he's like, like, I got nothing else to lose. Okay. Yeah, all right then. So we gotta go and go. Right? That's that's your call. Okay. Yeah. So uh another fun power question or from the power verse question. Mm -hmm. If you could pick three people from any show, um, who would you have dinner with and why? Like if you could make like a dinner table. Who would you have dinner with from any of the shows? The characters? Characters. Or? Characters and could be like professionally as well. Um I'm I'm up there. I, I mean Monet. Okay. Yeah. Monet as Monet or Mary J. Blige? Uh, Mary J. Blige. Okay. Um her um <laughs> I want to be interesting three. I would okay. put uh, Patina. Oh. Uh, yeah, I will put her in there because. Have you met her? I have not had a chance to meet her. That would uh, be a good dinner table. Yeah, then. I'm mm -hmm. a fan. All right. Um, and um, <laughs> put it together. I and I think uh, Method Man. That'll be dope. Method I, I Man. Mean, I, they might get the, you know, they get, the, you know, <laughs> might get to sing the rap. They might get to sing all I need. The table, they get to all sing anyway. So I believe so. It's like, but no, I, I like it because I, I'm about stories. Mm. I like hearing stories and journeys. And they lived in that era where I was, you know, that, that whole '90s era was, was was rocking with Method and and, and Mary and Sosa Patino as well. Just and and hear Patino's aspect of the theater and and the acting and and I think it's just that's. That's what really thrives. I love hearing stories and journeys, how people came about, and just the stories in the industry. So. I know. Fun fact. Did you know that Method Man and Mary's song is 28 years old, the uh, All I Need song? Come on, man. And it's still going. Like, <laughs> it's it still just came going. out. It's still a hit. Yes. And you could play that at any time, and it still Please bangs. Do. Turn it. Alexa. <laughs> Turn it. <laughs> okay. So, before joining Power, mm -hmm. so we know that you did other... Other shows, because mm -hmm. you had a show on Epics. I, I think it was on Epics. Yeah. It was, it was on Epics. That was Get Shorty. Get Shorty. Uh -huh. And I think you also did. I remember seeing you in Fresh Off the Boat, but that show is. <laughs> <laughs> it was, I was quick. I was making my way It was up. quick. Very, very quick. That was a great year. But, I had but, so many guest stars. I know. I like, but I used to like that show. <laughs> yeah, it was a great because, show. I, especially like he did, there was something that he did that made me start watching the show a lot mm -hmm. um, when he did the whole breakdown of Nas. Yeah. That was so yeah. dope. But that's why I really remember. I was like, oh, I remember him. Yeah. But whatever the case is, um, after doing Power Season 1, Season 2 now, and all of the other acting gigs that you've done, did you have expectations of what Power should be or what you wanted to get out of it? Uh, I'm really not a, a, I, I try, you know, we always try to say, oh, don't live in expectations. But people would say, you know, once you, it was times where I'd be on set, I'm like, oh, I'm in the mirror of my trailer. And, you know, you have all that downtime. I'm like, boy, you on power. <laughs> like, you know, and you're not only on power, you're a main character. You are the main character. Main character <laughs> on one of the, the, the top characters' spinoff show. Mm -hmm. You know, so it's like, and you right next, you're there. It's you, you know, Tommy and all these amazing, you know, other actors and, and characters. So it was times where I really had to, you know, like smack myself real quick, like, I, I, and, and that you belong here. Like, you belong here. You put in the work to be here. And then people say, hey, man, your life's going to change after this show. I'm like, yeah, okay. And, you know, it was at the time, you know, and it did. Yeah. It changed an aspect of, you know, just in, 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 a, in an amazing way. My thing now is like I just wanted to bring value to the show then. I want to bring value to the show now and let it take me to wherever it's going to take me. So it's a it's a it's a whole sentiment of excitement, you know. So it's, it's yeah, the expectations were there. So then, what are your takeaways from working on Power? 
if I, you didn't have any expectations coming in, right? You didn't want to set yourself up for that. Right. What What have been your takeaways so far? My takeaways are um, to first come to work every day and bring it. Okay. Like, and you see these these banters between cares and all shows. Like, it's a battle, you know, when you go in there. So you need to be prepared for that battle. So my takeaways is make sure it's preparation first off as as, a, as an actor. Other is you know to bring the energy, but also man, share the love like I <laughs> like like share the love on set. Like you know what I mean. Outside of that, I love my cast and crew. Mm -hmm. I appreciate them so much. I appreciate everybody that puts so much work in on this show because there's a lot of behind the scenes things that go on. Mm -hmm. And you know, so I, my takeaways is, is is be hard work and use your work ethics. You know, your work ethics to be able to to, to do what you're gonna do, but also enjoy these moments too. Because it's not for long, yeah. you know. I don't know if I said, so enjoy the moments is really kind of big. Just resonated with me right now. How do you guys enjoy the moment on set? Do you guys joke around? <laughs> yeah, we do. Um, there's times, you know, I mean, sometimes it's long nights, you know. Somebody may go to sleep, you know. We put them on tape if they go to sleep. <laughs> uh, we like to play music sometimes in between, you know, in between takes if it's a long setup. Because it just, music, something about music just gives you that energy. You know, it changes the vibe. We... We you know we had a whole hair and makeup crew dancing sometimes okay. and do you know dance battles and just kind of play. So no funny stories of you guys playing pranks on each other or anything like that. We really haven't done any pranks like that. Okay, good. We just kind of, yeah <laughs> maybe maybe season three when we start shooting. Hopefully, and then plus we had the whole panini, so kind of different. <laughs> yeah, 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 <laughs> you can't yeah, yeah. really play around like that too yeah, much. Yeah, yeah, too too much. Okay, so uh, we're gonna wrap it up. Okay, but what else is Isaac doing now? Besides hosting parties. <laughs> Besides hosting parties. I'm just trying to get out there with my people, you know? No, uh, that's, that's a um, great thing. Yeah, I, I love it. I love any experiences that I can have, you know, out with people. I I really, like, like I am really humbled by the people that reach out and, and just really mess with Diamond, mess with Isaac and myself. You know, like, I'm humbled by it and I love it. So um, I'm trying to do more things like that. Um, okay. Uh, do you have any other shows that are coming out? Nothing at the moment. You know, right now, you know, hey, hey. I'm rolling with my writers, you know what I mean? I'm rolling with my writers. <laughs> right. and we, actors, we might be right next to them in a minute. Yeah, um, yeah so you got to fight for the rights. Um, so right now, uh, no no projects right at the moment. I'm looking at a lot of different projects right now. Okay. I'm auditioning, and I'm excited to get back to work for season three as well. You know. Oh, so. oh well, so we don't know when because of the strike. So what he's talking about, guys, is that there is currently a writer's strike. We are in Oh, week. it's happening now. Yeah, yeah, we are in week three, I believe, yeah. of the writer's strike. Mm -hmm. um, has there been any movements? Um, not that I know of. I mean, right now we're getting to the point where we're seeing if the actors are going to go on strike. So this whole industry right now is just <laughs> a big shakeup at the moment. Um, <laughs> but, you know, certain things, things, some things need to change. There's been some things that have been in place since the 80s that need to change uh, to, to benefit, I believe, everyone. All of the you creatives. Know, it's all about compromise, right? So let's let's compromise in the right direction. And, uh, yeah, I'm all for that right now. Well, all right. Let's say thank you to Mr. Isaac Keys. Force yeah. will be coming your way soon. <laughs> uh, probably by the time this <laughs> airs, we'll hopefully have a release date. Yes. Uh, so we're hoping for some time around in the next three months or so. Yes. So thank you, Mr. Isaac Keys. Anything else before we go? I just want to thank you. Oh. I appreciate you creating this platform <laughs> and uh, allowing us actors from power and the universe to really get out and kind of share our stories and be able to kind of tap in and answer questions that we don't get a chance to. So, well, thank you. You're so welcome. <laughs> thank you. All righty. Thanks, yeah. guys. All right.